in the Celtic news this morning, it was big news. Obviously, there has been a change to the tunnel at Celtic Park. Celtic make an acknowledgement to oh, remember him, the player that's been ousted by Adam Ida. And should Adam Ida start the game this weekend? Ah, tell me what you think in the comments. And big Chris Sutton says that Celtic should spend three million pounds on one player. And then we're going to talk about the meme penalty Rangers because it's not just a meme. There's something worrying and more that we need to think about. Anyway, Celtic today uh, put out their uh, happy birthday. And a lot of people say it's happy birthday, Pish. It's, uh, and I'm just going to say it as it is. A lot of people say stop with this happy birthday, Pish, and, and put out some meaningful content, Celtic. But they did put out a happy birthday. Oh, hashtag Celtic FC um, on their social medias this morning. Um, and it's got to say that O oh, has disappeared out of the picture. And, and it's no fault of his own. It's no fault of his own. It's the fact that Celtic brought in Adam Eder, And Adam Eder's had a fantastic start to his Celtic career compared to what O had. Um, if O had been a bit more prolific in front of goals, we wouldn't have went for Adam Eder. It's as simple as that. The Irishman's impact uh, since joining the club, I mean, just look at the goal last weekend for starters, which takes me to the point of this weekend's game. Should Adam Eder start before Kyogo this weekend? Should Adam either start before Kyogo? What do you think about that one? Tell me in the comments. When you look at it, it has been a bit unfortunate for all. You've got to remember that he won the treble last year under Andrew Postacoglu. But um, he is just a young lad and he's got a lot of development left. At this stage, Celtic really do not need development players, especially with the Champions League pot of cash. Yes, the big bag of cash, the 60 million that both us and them are chasing. And let's face it, it's not to try and achieve anything in Europe. It's just to, to get the money. That's all that it is about. So with the, this weekend's game, Celtic are hosting St Mirren. And St Mirren are hitting the headlines today for other reasons. And I think it's a bit of a disgrace, actually. Because what would be an away game for a certain team would end up being a home game. And I think that Scottish football allows this to happen is absolutely unbelievable. It is absolutely unbelievable if this is allowed to happen. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. Anyway, Celtic do entertain St Mirren this weekend. Celtic are still currently sitting top of the table on 75 points, one point ahead of our old rivals, who are meant to be playing a game next week. Anyway, the predicted 11. Uh, for this weekend's game before uh, the manager, Brendan Rodgers, has his press conference in the next hour or so. Um, I'm going to give you what I think will be pre pre predicted lineup, And I think the, the back four and the keeper will be the exact same. There's no chance of, of that changing. It's obviously going to be Greg Taylor, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Liam Scales and Alistair Johnson in front of Joe Hart. Joe Hart, who's going into the the downward spiral of his footballing career and speculation is rife around the country and around the world on goalkeepers that Celtic may or may not be after. Um, there's obviously one speculation about the Liverpool goalkeeper. But after the way he played last night, they can keep him if you ask me. It's... He can keep him. Um, Callum McGregor, um, he only got Thursday, I think it was, training. Thursday and Saturday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, got training last week. Um, so I'm not, I don't think that he will start the game, which means the one and only Tomoki Awata will start the game in the middle of the park with Rio Hatate and Matt O'Reilly. Well, Hatate last the full game this time. But uh, I'm sure Paulo Bernardo will make the bench, and I think he should come in a little bit earlier than did the last game, and Callum McGregor will make the bench. It's more important to get him just another 30 minutes game time, I think, and in this game, and get him really fit for the running, because that's where the really important goals. And then we go to the wing. Will Nicholas Kuhn take up his regular spot on the right? Um, although... <clears throat> Is he better than Yang? I'm still, I, I still kind of get over Yang for the for the goal from last weekend. But people are saying, look, Yang was a, was a lot better than who, just taking that moment from the goal. People are blaming other players on the pitch, but it's Yang that he got past to get the cross in and uh, get it past in the goal. Anyway, Louis Palmer, he could be set to return. Will Louis Palmer take straight back to the pitch? Dyson Maida's there, and it's Dyson shirt. I can't see him dropping Dyson Maida, to be perfectly honest. And then it comes to the front player, Kyogo. Kyogo didn't have the impact that he, he probably wanted to have in the Glasgow Derby, but um, Adam Maida did. Adam Maida did. And I think 
that could give him that little bit nod. And I think it would be good for the manager just to spice it up a little, just for the running, give Kyogo that little bit of rest and just make sure that he's ready for the running. And we've got to remember that we do have, after this game this weekend, we do have a semi-final at Hamden. And there were more tickets released for that. So if you didn't get them, there's an even bigger allocation of Celtic fans. But the downside of that, the downside is if we take over 25,000 at Hamden this time, is that there's no chance that everyone's going to get a ticket for the final, especially if the Sevconians manage to get to the final. And, and that's if Celtic get to the final. Let's, <laughs> Aberdeen are not going to do anything, are they? Aberdeen are, are woeful. They've got a new manager yet. I think they were looking at the manager that um, sold us Gustav Lagerbelke. Could that be something in the making? <laughs> Gustav's going to Italy, isn't he? If he's any sense, he'd get the hell out of Scottish football and he'd head to Italy and live the dream. Um, yes, so I think that would be my starting lineup. I think it would be Hart, Johnson, Carter, Vickers, Scales, Taylor at the back as normal. That's, your, that's the most solid defence that we have at the moment. We've got a lot of speculation about Scales um, for next season. Scales hasn't signed this new contract as yet, which is a bit strange considering he was offered it a long time ago. He hasn't signed this new contract and he said that Celtic are now looking at other defenders in the summer. What does that say to Lager Belke and what does it say to Big Marek Novoroki? Um, it doesn't say a lot, does it? Uh, but anyway, that's for the, another video and another day. Celtic, in the meanwhile, have made a little upgrade to the tunnel area as you walk out of Celtic Park. Yes, uh, the, they have put up a new, a new sticker. This is, it's just a new sticker. It's just new vinyl that they've put up. They've painted it black again. Maybe just give it a coat of paint and stuck up some new stickers. And it says, you don't play for Celtic, you live for Celtic. Unfortunately, in the modern game, players won't get that at all. The modern player will not get that. The modern player will come to Celtic, uh, and let's not beat about the bush, uh, the modern player will come to Celtic and see Celtic as a stepping stone. See Celtic as a stepping stone to bigger riches in European football. Yeah, okay, the, maybe the Spanish league, like one Celtic player wants to do, he wants to jump ship to play in Spain at some point. And then you have the likes of Matt O'Reilly that's getting chased by teams in Spain, but was getting chased by a team in Spain. And uh, it's now suggested that he might end up in England. But they, we all know that players really, I mean, you don't play for Celtic, you live for Celtic. The Scottish players, yes, they'll completely get that, they'll understand that and they'll understand what it means. But I think when you look at the likes of O and players, I think you, there's a lot of journeymen at Celtic just now, and uh, there's going to be a lot of journeymen that will get passed on this summer. Anyway, talking about Chris Sutton, Chris Sutton's been saying that Celtic, if we get him for three million, should absolutely... Now, there's a lot of people saying, don't buy him, don't buy him. He's not worth it. He's not worth the, the money. He's not, he's, not a, he's, not Celtic, he's not a Celtic player. And then he pops up with a goal last weekend. Pops up a goal last weekend to make it three, and Adam Ida says Chris Sutton would be an absolute steal at three million pounds from Norwich City. Will Norwich City sell him for three million? Uh, the only loan, 23-year-old Republic of Ireland international, whose uh, whose goal tally is, I think, six. Six since he's came to Celtic. That's not a bad return since, I mean, I did say, but I think he'd score 10 goals between now, uh, between Christmas and when he, well, it was just the end of January um, and the end of the season. He's only four away with it. Do you know? And I think he still could, I still, he, he could still hit 10 goals. If he gets in 10 goals for us in half a season, what could he do with a full season? Um, and obviously the fact that Kyogo is our main striker, but I, I'm still I'm still the type of person that would love to see Celtic, especially in the Scottish League. I think the Celtic should be playing a 3-5-2. That's nonsense of, of the, the format that Ange Postacoglu played where you had the wing-backs coming into the middle of the park trying to push up. Just play a straight-back three. And then your defensive midfield player is, is your sort of fourth defender if need be. You know, and having more attack in Celtic, have two strikers. Could you imagine the damage that we would probably do to these low block anti football teams in Scotland uh, if we were playing two strikers in the middle of the park, in the middle of the box, rather than just one and then, you know, an attacking midfield player trying to come in making runs in the box? To me, you just get two strikers in the box and, and cause absolute havoc. Absolute havoc. But by Chris Sutton says that, look, at £3 million. 
three million pounds would be an absolute steal. An absolute steal. Tell me what you think about Chris Sutton saying that. Um, about the Cork born striker, Adam Ida. Anyway, let's get to a little bit about a meme, a meme that goes around Scottish football. And it's a, me a meme that's wildly known, and, and they call it penalty bingo. But it is the cry of penalty rangers that could then soon be going into the record books. They fucking can't make this up. They actually can't make it up. Penalty rangers proves to be more than a meme at Ibrox, as the, the, the rangers are on the verge of breaking two spot kick world records. Well, you fucking wouldn't believe it, would you? They have to be. They have to win. They, <laughs> they have to win the morality cup. <laughs> so they have to be world record breakers at something else, don't they? And that is obviously going to be with the help of VAR in Scotland and the help of the referees, who we all know are uh, uh, lodge members. Lodge members, and there's quite a lot of lodge members in the referee fraternity in Scotland. But it's not just Scottish football circles where penalty rangers could soon be making history, this says. I fucking can't believe it. Um, Travenier is, is the most successful penalty taker ever. <laughs> he scored more goals. Oh, fuck, I can't believe it. Fuck, what the fucking nonsense. Anyway, this popped up in Yahoo News, and I thought, I fucking can't make it up. Scottish football. Anyway, the shocking news, um, considering the, the postponement of the game on Wednesday, and I'm going to talk about this because I think it's absolutely disgusting if this happens. The, the team across the city from us, uh, Arts Rival, well, the new club from across the city that we played last weekend, and they celebrated a 3-3 win. And they celebrated a 3-3 win. They went to play Dundee during the week. And Dundee have asked St. Mirren if they can play the game. Yeah, you fucking cannot make this up. They've asked if they could play Rangers at St. Mirren, so it then becomes a home game to Rangers. This, can't, this cannot be allowed to happen. Dundee fans are not going to travel away through to St. Mirren to watch what should potentially be a home game. Why not play at St. Johnston, which is a bit closer? Why not play at Dundee United, which is just across the round? Why the fuck are they playing it at St. Mirren? So they can get as many Rangers fans in as they can possibly be to just make sure that they win that game. This should not be allowed to happen, and I think it's absolutely disgusting. Um, the fact that it's even been spoke about should be questioned by every other team in Scottish football. You should, if you're going to play in a, a neutral venue, it should be the closest one to your home stadium. Not one 40 miles up the road, just two minutes down the road for Ibrox. Not a fucking chance. Not a chance. This shambles is going to drag down Scottish football. That and along with VAR. Anyway, we'll do another video later on this afternoon and we'll talk about uh, what Brendan and whoever that gets pumped out to the media this afternoon and we'll see what interesting questions that they're, they're still going to talk about the game last weekend aren't they you know what's going to happen and the, the the media are just going to keep on talking about the game last weekend and they're not going to talk about St Man and they're not going to talk about players coming back from fitness such as the, uh, they probably will ask that actually but anyway on that note have a fantastic day Celtic fans all around the world because we are all around the world.